Hey everybody, welcome to the tonaltrans.com Spotter Spots vlog. Today, we're going to take a look at some descending chromatic lines, um, or walk downs, and their harmonies. Um, also, lament bass, line cliches, planing, uh, the omnibus progression, and contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony. Now I'll get into all those terms over the next few minutes, but for now the easiest way to look at it is we're going to look at a string of notes in the harmony which descend chromatically. By the way, that's one note at a time with no whole step skips. All half steps, all semitones. And yeah, because you've got five or six chromatic notes in a row, and there's absolutely no diatonic scale out there that does anything like that, the possibilities for harmonization are pretty vast. Okay, our first example of this vastness comes from the beginning of Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. And the chromatic um, descending line here, you know, goes like, you know, anyways, you know what it sounds like. Um, let me introduce the scale degree names. We've got scale degree number one here, which you could also call scale degree eight if you wanted to indicate its proximity to the seventh scale degree here. And we got flat seven, six, flat six, and the fifth scale degree. All right, in case you'd like to know, someone somewhere in order to describe this came up with this phrase, lament bass, like lamentations of your women when I am Conan the Barbarian, or something like that, I don't know. Basically though, it's a minor sounding line that starts on the root and goes down to the fifth scale degree. Um, and look here, the reason I colored the minor scale degrees in the sequence lament bass's brown color here is to indicate that it doesn't always have to be purely chromatic to be considered lament bass. Uh, so like in stairway you do have all the half step semitones in between the root down of the fifth scale degree. Um, but just as commonly, if not more so, uh, you can also just play the natural minor notes. Also known as the Phrygian tetrachord, which is geek speak for the first four notes down um, the natural minor scale, these boils right here. Examples of this are like in the song The Cat Came Back or Pink Elephants on Parade and like a hundred others. Um, so yeah, but it's like this. Oh, Mr. Johnson had troubles of his own. He had a yellow cat and he blew up all this stuff. Um, and yeah, if, you know, I may throw some more BS your way real quick. I'd like to point out that in the songs that throw in the chromatic fillers, it's a trend uh, that the chords with the primary lament bass, Phrygian tetrachord, natural minor notes, they feel and are played with a little more heaviness. The music has more of a back and forth, push and relax, in and out, breathy musicality. And here's what I mean, you know, so you got the la la la, la 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 la. You get a little more heavy, la 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 la. But then you get a little nicer, la 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 la. Kind of mitigated by that inversion too, you know. But then you go a little more heavy, la 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 la, la 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 la. So there's that. Now you may have noticed by now that all these examples up here start from the root and go down to the fifth scale degree. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can start a descending chromatic harmonization from anywhere. It's just a trend that starting from the root or tonic is how it's done most of the time. And besides, any examples like that wouldn't really fit on my nice tidy table up here. So screw them. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but yeah, they exist. Okay, let's get into these harmonizations. So right here we got the minor one, then we got a five uh, with a little flat six there, um, which you could also call a augmented seven here with a sharp nine. The reason to choose the former though would be both the fact that five chords are just more common and also because the so-called flat six note, I mean it doesn't come in until the last note of that chord's range anyway, you know, so it's like na na do, it's last. Um, but whatever you call it, quite a spectacular chord. Um, then on to the flat three, that's a diatonic buddy for you there. Um, and then a nice little major four there, first inversion for kind of that nice little Dorian or melodic, melodic minor kind of flavor. Um, and then a flat six type with a major seven in there for color. And um, then there's this quick little out of sequence thing right here. Um, before we get to our uh, one which contains our fifth scale degree. And what this is though is it's this G chord or flat seven in A minor. Um, though at first listen it doesn't have the G. But we still call it G though because I mean that's how our ear hears it because it's a G chord pretty much everywhere else in the song. Um, and it's even a G in the melody um, when we get to the melody. And I mean upon first listen you might hear it as like a B minor or even like an E minor seven. 
if you'd never heard Stairway before. I mean, but like, what are we going to do? Post flyers around the local college campus saying, wanted people who've never heard Stairway to Heaven for study involving oral premonition of diatonic implications. $40 stipend, year and sample required. I mean, we're not going to do that because it's freaking Stairway. Anyways, I like to think of this line again as having kind of a J shape with a little hook at the end because as the flat 7 chord, the G chord, is built on the note below uh, the minor 1 diatonically, it's kind of like flips the direction just there, you know, kind of to make a little up. You know, just for a tiny bit, just an eighth note long. So it's like, so it's like this, you know, uh, J. Okay, up next is My Funny Valentine by Rogers and Hart. And here we see that they just kind of stay on the same chord and just kind of let the chromatic descending line do its thing, you know, like eight or one or whatever. Uh, major seven, flat seven, six, flat six, all in these one chords. And this technique has um, a couple of fun terms for it too. It's called either line cliche or contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony, um, which I didn't write on the board here because that's too long. But sometimes people abbreviate it as C-E-S-H or Cash maybe by you know people that abbreviate things and yeah I'll leave it up to you what you like better okay let's hear it it's like A minor let me put that major seven in there a nice little dissonance there and then we cool it off with the A minus seven oh and now we get down to the sixth scale degree this this contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony uh, it kind of starts to break down here because we run into some alternate spellings it's like this minor one chord with a six there. Um, you could also call that uh, as diminished six. And next, a minor one chord with a flat six can also be called a flat six major with a major seven. Same as we had in Stairway. Um, and you can see I even flip flop their order on that row um, because that's how it is in all the books and that's honestly how people prefer to spell it. Uh, moving on, these red X's here at the bottom row here represent two chords that are played before we finally get to the fifth scale degree. Um, and unlike the slight delay in stairway, these chords get their whole own measures. So now it's a two measure delay um, instead of just a one eighth note J delay. And I'm not going to tell you what they are right now because um, I really want to move on to the next song. Okay, the official name for It's Not Easy Being Green is just Being Green. Uh, by Kermit the Frog. And yes, Kermit did write the song. He's a real frog that writes songs. I mean, some people say Joe Raposo wrote it, but they're lying liars that murder unicorns. Okay, the first thing that makes this example stand out from the pack is that it's in a major key. So yeah, I mean, you can find descending chromatic harmonies in major keys too. Though in major keys, this whole back and forth, push and relax, in and out, breathy musicality um, switches its bias to the major diatonic scale notes instead of the minors like before in brown. Um, so now it's like this, you know, you get your major one chord. Not easy being green and then we leave kind of heavy right in there to that uh, uh, augmented 7 chord, but then we kind of relax with a kind of weaker minor 5, but then we really give it to you there with that secondary dominant 6, uh, 7, but then we kind of cool off again with another minor chord, 4 minor, and then uh, obviously the 5 dominant is going to be pretty heavy there, and back to C. Um, and remember, this is just a trend. You don't have to tie these subtle, heavy, light, strong, weak feels to, to diatonics, to the key of the song, um, if you don't want to. All right, one quick disclaimer. In my sheet music for the song from 1985, the chord harmonizing the flat six scale degree is a minor four. Um, but in the jazz real book version, as well as many other versions of the song, the chord is not a minor four, but it's actually a minor two, uh, which would make sense because of this secondary dominant being a five of two, might as well go to the two, right? But yeah, as to which chord Joe Raposo, I mean, which chord Kermit the Frog wrote, um, we'll just have to leave that to another Google search for another day. Moving on. I mean, yeah, moving right along, blah, 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 on the Muppet Show, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Another appropriate side tangent here is to talk about planing. It's like planes of existence, right? Not airplanes. Um, but yeah, planing is probably the most caveman obvious way to harmonize a descending chromatic line because all the notes move chromatically at the same interval. So whatever chord or harmonization you're playing, you just move that chord up and down. 
And there's no examples up here of that, but I did underline the major chords up here on each row so you can kind of see what that looks like on paper. And here's what it sounds like, you know. I'm not playing a guitar player, it's so easy to do that. Um, but yeah, that's just major. I mean, you could do it with any chord, really. Like, check it out. I also underlined, like, will underline wavy lines for the minors there, you know, so they wouldn't be left out. But here's what, like, minor playing sounds like, you know, it's like... It's like the tornado's blowing, and the monster is like, roar! And then the chandelier comes down and crushes all the people! Okay, our last example is the E minor prelude by Chopin. Uh, now, first of all, let's face it, composers of the classical eras are pretty much way smarter and way more creative than anyone will like ever be ever again. Probably. But they're dead, and so they can't surf the internet or eat hamburgers on subways. Um, so it's a fair trade-off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I mean about this example being more awesome than the rest, in a way, is that it takes the harmonization one step further by assigning not just one, but multiple chords to each descending note in the line. So, all right, let's do this. So we're in E minor, so we start on an E minor, a little one chord there. And then we're going to do this nice sounding sus thing where we so we got our E there, but we got a sus2 and a sus4. Um, you could also call this um, a 2 half diminished 7 if you wanted, without its flat 5. Um, then we go on to the 7 and a 7 scale degree with a nice diminished chord there, and we change a note. And we're somehow magically at a flat 2 with a dominant 7. And then we're going to go down to the flat 7 here for a nice little mate, uh, minor chord there. And then we're going to change a note, make it diminished. And now we change another note, and now it's a one chord, a uh, major one chord with a dominant seven, which you could call it one seven, I guess. And drop the middle, and now it's minor. Still got that seven, though. And then we're gonna, now gonna go on to the six scale degree. And then we got our diminished six, which you could also call a uh, one fully diminished seven without its flat, f uh, flat five. Changing scale degrees down here. Gonna be here a while, folks. We got a uh, flat six major chord, and then I got to reset my fingering here because the shelf changed on my guitar. Um, but yeah, there it is. Our two half diminished seven. This time without its flat three, change a note, and we're on a flat six diminished. Change one more note, and we got a flat seven. Uh, seven. Change the middle note, and now it's become minor. Still with that seven. And then last but not least, let's go down to the fifth scale degree here for a nice five diminished. Um, and then let me just refinger here. And the last chord in the sequence is a flat six with a major seven. Oh. And that's where we'll stop. I mean, that's just the half of it. The progression still got quite a ways to go at this point. I just stopped here because that's where the chromatic descending minor harmony stops and moves on to other things and other chords. But speaking of other chords, holy crap, that's 16 chords and counting where he didn't repeat any chords. 16 plus unique chords in a row. I mean, you're just not going to see that you know, anymore. Anyone in the pop world pull that off these days. Um, because, I mean, there's just, not, there's just not enough sorrow and illness and long isolating winters with, you know, no central heating and, and all the lamentation without your Netflix and all that stuff. And ooh, look, okay. So, in case you got an eagle eye and you're about to get on me about the two half diminished sevens, um, well... This alternate spelling up here and this guy down here, they're not really the same because, again, one's missing its flat third and the other one is flat fifth. So they're not the same three notes. So they're not the same chord, technically. But yeah, 16 chords and more. Wow. Okay, I got another disclaimer quick about these chord types in general, and that's that they're all based, as you can see, in the E minor key, which isn't like a wrong way to do it. But many of these chords could also be described more acutely as brief modulations to other keys. Secondary 2-5-1s, secondary diminished chords, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I didn't go that far for this vlog because basically I'm lazy and I didn't want to mess up my whiteboard too much or get too off topic. Okay, next you've been waiting patiently, so I'm going to go tell you about uh, why I colored some of these chords red. And it's pretty simple actually, if you haven't guessed already. You see, there's this trend in these lament bass uh, line harmonizations to want to delay getting to the fifth scale degrees harmonization. So like in Stairway, we delay with just this one little out of sequence guy, and then in My Funny Valentine we got these two full guys. And in Chopin, you know, there's no 
um, out of sequence chords, but he does take five different harmonizations on the flat six in order to get to the fifth scale degree. Um, so yeah, I mean, five delayed. That's a trend and I'm sticking to it. Okay, last, let's talk about a few more chords you could use for your descending chromatic harmonies. First, the chords colored in blue um, are an example of what's called an omnibus progression, which has the added benefit of attempting to have another line uh, ascending chromatically at the same time as the descending line. I say attempting because you usually have to cheat once or twice uh, by staying on a note or skipping to another note in order to make it work. Here's kind of what that's supposed to sound like. So, I got a dominant one and then I go down to the minor three, then I go back to the dominant, and I got another dominant here. Then I go to a minor two and then back to a dominant six. But yeah, uh, go to the wiki page for omnibus progression if you want to see the whole example as well as some others. Moving on, the major four and the minor six um, are the other obvious major diatonic possibilities for the first scale degree. And I guess you could also play uh, the minor diatonic equivalents, minor, uh, minor four and a flat six um, there, but I'm not going to write those down right now because I forgot to and uh, there's no space. And I hate minor chords. I'm racist against minor chords. Just kidding. Back to planing, um, you could play a seven major and a seven minor on the seven scale degree. Um, and for the flat seven, you got the the flat the flat seven chord. And I mean, it's I don't know how we managed to miss that because I mean it's the fourth most popular chord type in pop music. And by the way, shameless plug: if you haven't seen my video blog series about the most popular chord types in pop music. Um, you should probably watch it. It's really good. But anyways, moving down to the next row, a couple more diatonics, um, a planer there, um, and some more uh, diatonic possibilities. But ooh, uh, this time they're the minor diatonics. Now you don't have to accuse me of chord racism or keyism. Um, or tonal, tonal, tonal Nazism. Okay, well that's the end of our examples. A couple of honorable mentions. Songs that we could have used for this blog but didn't include uh, Blue Skies, Babe I'm Gonna Leave You, Phantom of the Opera, and the James Bond theme. And pretty much everything Tchaikovsky ever wrote because he was also into Long Winters and Lamentation and you know. Na, 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 na. And yeah, that's it for now. Until next time, make sure to like us, subscribe, and follow us on all the websites. And if you got some time, uh, you should stick around and watch another music theory and songwriting video from the tonaltrends.com vlogs. Um, all right, thanks, and have a good one. Contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony is one technique which you can add to your harmonic armory to variegate your composition's audible anatomy and stimulate your listeners' right coronary artery. <laughs>